Hey there, welcome. My name is Jessica Buchanan, and I'm a New York Times bestselling author, professional speaker, and founder of Soul Speak Press, a non traditional publishing company created for women who've been through something, now they know something, and they can teach us something. In Her Words is a podcast designed to support aspiring memoir authors on their writing and publishing journey. It's hard work, this writing and publishing stuff. And I want to empower you with encouragement and information so you can keep sharing your truth. So grab your coffee, your notebook, find a quiet space, and let's dive in. Well, hey there. Welcome back to season two of In Her Words. Oh my goodness. I can't believe we're already at season two. (laughs) Admittedly, season one was a, a bit short. Um, but I'm excited to jump back in. I have so many ideas and so many things I want to talk about and so many things I want to share with you all and just so many conversations um, with really interesting women who have been working in this industry or um, who are writing um, to share their experience and their wisdom with you all. And first of all, um, I hope everybody had a great summer, a great break. Um, I know I did. It flew it flew by and I feel like every, everybody I've like seen on the soccer field or, you know, we had an event last night, a book reading for Desert Mountain Tops uh, too. And I, you know, was seeing some people that I hadn't seen it all summer. And, you know, you're like, how was your summer? And everybody's just like, oh, it flew by. Like, I can't believe how fast it went. Um, and I definitely feel the same. My family traveled a ton this summer. We usually do travel a lot. And if you are part of my community on Instagram, then you'd see, um, you know, the high highs and the low lows. Um, I try to keep it real, (laughs) um, but we spent a month in Sweden, uh, with my husband's family. My husband's from Sweden. And, um, so we spend usually anywhere from like a month to seven weeks in the summertime there. And we're fortunate that we can both, you know, work remotely. A lot of times I'll follow a couple of weeks after because, um, you know, it's just easier for me to get my work done from, from home. Um, but this time I decided to go for the full, like three, it will ended up being four weeks because at the end, like literally we had gotten to the end of the trip. Usually we always have at least one ER visit from somebody, whether it's the kids or one of his parents. Um, I've been to the ER a couple of times. So one time when I was pregnant, I had to, my hands swelled up really bad and I had to go to the emergency room and get a ring cut off. So that was fun. So we made it all the way to the end of the trip with no one having to go to the ER. And we were talking the Friday afternoon, we were headed out Saturday. My husband and I went out on one last lunch date and we were talking about how amazing it was that we made it through the whole trip without having to go to the emergency room. And then it was like, Six hours later, maybe my son started talking about how his stomach was hurting and I'm not necessarily super compassionate. So I was like, you're fine. Just eat your dinner. And then it's time for bed. He couldn't eat, which is not like overly like abnormal for him. Sometimes he's a finicky eater. And, you know, when they're with their grandparents, of course, they're eating. They're off their regular eating schedule, shall we say. Um, And then a couple hours later, uh, all hell broke loose. Let's just, we'll just leave it at that. Um, and both my kids ended up with food poisoning, apparently, allegedly from, um, contaminated ice cream, soft serve ice cream is what we surmised. And long story short, um, we ended up having to switch our flights. We couldn't get out until the next Monday, Um, They missed their first day of school, which I think bothered me more than it did them. And anyway, we just like got home Monday night and ordered Chipotle because we are always super hungry for Mexican food when we come back from Sweden because we like subsist on Mexican food and um, dropped right back into work and school and soccer practice and dance and all the things. So um. I definitely need a vacation from my vacation and I don't think I'm going to get that. So that was the end of my summer. Hopefully you had a great one too, and you're ready to get back at it. And this is the first week back to school. I think for a lot of you parents out there, it's the um, Thursday after Labor Day. And maybe, maybe you've been in the, the, maybe you don't have kids in school anymore. Maybe you've been back for a couple of weeks 
But anyway, I wherever you're at in your life, in your journey, I'm super happy that you're here. Um, today, I want to talk a little bit about the difference between a memoir and a memoir manifesto. Okay, so I have noticed that um, maybe we haven't been messaging that extremely clearly uh, on like our website and in our social media. And I realized that when I was getting submissions for manuscripts, really interesting stories, um, really well written from women who have definitely been through something, um, but they weren't necessarily carrying through that. I, um, I've been through something. Now I know something and I want to teach you something, which is kind of our, not kind of, it is our mantra. It's on our website. Um, we bring that through. I think it's even in our bios on Instagram. Like we bring that through in everything we do. Like that is the core um, mantra of Soul Speak Press and what we aim to do. And I turned the submissions down, even though I desperately, I really wanted to to publish them and work with these women because their stories were so fascinating. Um, but I turned them down in their current format because I said, you know, true to staying true to who we are, Soul Speak Press is really here to publish women's memoir manifestos. So you got a terrific memoir here, but I don't see any manifesto. So if you really want to work with us, go back and find the manifesto part and write that in. Or if you want to, we can help you find that too. Um, so I didn't hear back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's okay. And um, there are memoir manifestos out there for us. I know they just need to find us. So, but I thought it would be interesting to talk a little bit about what the difference is between a memoir um, in my, from my perspective in a memoir manifesto and what we're looking for, what we're looking to publish in, uh, uh, from Soul Speak Press. Okay. So what is, um, what is a memoir? First of all, all right, a memoir is in basic terms, it's a body of work that a person writes about their own experiences. Okay. So um, it's different than an autobiography because it's a portion of time. It's a specific, perhaps like incident, um, or perhaps it like uh, centers around a theme. You know, we do a lot of that with our deserts to mountaintops in like our first one was reclaiming our voice. Our second one was about choosing healing through radical self-acceptance. And of course, our third one that we're working through and we're almost finished with the manuscript now is the pilgrimage of motherhood, right? So, you know, with a lot of my authors, um, especially when you're writing just a chapter, I, it, it's always a conversation of like, you're putting too much in here. This isn't an autobiography. We don't need the entire life story of when your parents were born and where they immigrated from. And, you know, unless it directly pertains to this slice that you're going to be writing about. Um, a memoir is, you know, it's an account of what you've experienced and um, it's what you've been through. And then it's also, there are reflective moments, right? There are reflective pieces of like how you felt about what happened, um, when it happened, and then perhaps how you feel about it now, right? Some, some reflections, some summaries, um, but it's, I, I, some of my, you know, favorite, uh, memoirs that I've read as of late are um, The Many Lives of Mama Love. I can't remember what her name is, the author, but we'll put it in the show notes. Um, that's probably one of my favorite uh, memoirs that I've read recently um, because it's very raw. It's very real. She absolutely invites us to come in and judge her on being like a drug addicted mother who loses her kids. Um, but then there is a redemption in the story, but she doesn't necessarily move to that space of like offering an opportunity for the reader to have transformation. Yes, I'm inspired. I'm, I it made me think the writing was extraordinary. Um, she's very gifted, but I didn't pull or glean anything out of that book that I could necessarily apply to my life. And so that is, to me, the difference between a memoir and a memoir manifesto. We are, the distinction is that that memoir manifesto takes takes the manuscript, takes the story, the memoir to the next level where we are offering tangible tools and, and takeaways and, and really teaching points for our reader in order to offer them an opportunity to, for transformation. So um, a manifesto 
if you look up the diction in the dictionary that the definition is that it's an attempt to chart a new course. Okay. And so that is essentially what we're trying to do here at Soul Speak Press with the books that we publish, with the stories that we're publishing. We are looking for stories of women who've been through something hard, they've overcome, and then they have attempted or um, really been able to chart a new course. And then they can offer us some ideas on how we can do that for ourselves. Writing with intention, um, memoirs are, or memoir manifestos are written with intention to ignite change. They empower someone with the tools that they used to overcome. They inspire our readers to reach for more. Um, not only do they think, huh, wow, that woman is what a badass. She really overcame something. She got her act together. Uh, she got control of her health. She got out of that abusive relationship. They also take us to the, like a manifesto takes us to the next level of like offering us and um, some real tangible ways that we can actually apply that to our lives so that the reader can come away and be like, hmm, maybe if she did that, I could do that too. I think memoir manifestos are proof that there is um, a possibility and that it is possible for someone to overcome and then thrive in, in their life once they've overcome trauma. Um, it's a life stance. Okay, this is where we get into our mantra again at Soul Speak Press that you've been through something, now you know something, and you can teach us something. The last part is so key to the manifesto of the memoirs that we publish. What can you teach your reader? Um, I want every book that we put out to have actionable steps, tools, takeaways for the reader. Why is this important to me? I think part of it's because I am a teacher. Um, at heart. And I always will be once a teacher, always a teacher. So I want everything that we put out into the world to teach, right? If it's through tremendously beautiful storytelling, if it's through heartbreaking accounts of, you know, abuse, uh, domestic violence, um, whatever it is, I want there to be actionable steps that the reader has been able to glean from their experience that they can then communicate to their reader because that's an offering. To me, that's what we call turning horror into contribution. Um, it's a contribution, yes, to share your story, but then to be able to have sat in your story and to have healed to the point where you can actually pull those actionable steps and those takeaways that then somebody else could use to pull themselves out of a horrific situation. That to me is the contribution. That is the service. That is the offering. That is why we write. That is why we tell our stories. Um, I value my reader's time, right? I am a very busy person. I read and speak for a living. Um, if I'm not feeling like I'm going to learn something and it's more than I don't really even read to be entertained every once in a while, I'll read something when I'm on vacation. Um, but even like, and I don't read a lot of fiction, so I can't really speak to that genre, but there's a reason why Barbara King Solver's Demon Copperhead won a Pulitzer, right? It's fiction. It's beautiful storytelling. The voice is just incredible. I mean, how she can like capture a 10 year old boy's uh, Appalachian boy's voice is insane, but it's also teaching us something. There are actual takeaways. She's pushing on cultural um, deficits and failures in that part of the country. Um, she's talking about policy through storytelling. Like I'm learning something. There are actual takeaways actually from me reading that fiction. So we want to be able to um, give our reader an opportunity for a return on investment of their time, not just their money. Books aren't that expensive, but you know what? Times are tough. Like inflation, things are expensive. So if you want somebody who um, is going to, who's looking to better their lives, who's looking to be inspired and motivated and encouraged, and you want them to spend $25 of their hard earned dollars on your book and on your story, you better make sure that you're offering them an opportunity for transformation. You got to make sure that you're worth their time. Um, they don't want to spend $25 on your book and then get halfway through it and think this is offering me nothing. This is this. I can't apply any of this to my life. Right. So um, I find it personally frustrating when I read someone's memoir 
and they've had this big, huge transformation and they have pulled themselves out of the muck and the mire. And now they've gone on to live this beautiful life, but I don't know how they did it. And again, maybe this is just me. Maybe this is just my personality and the fact that like, I'm such an advocate, right? Like if something works for me, like every time I get a new beauty product, like I just got this, um, I don't, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like this firming stuff that you put under your eyes. And like, if you're watching this on YouTube, like, I mean, it works. <laughs> Like, I don't have a filter on this or anything. It's amazing. And I just like want to go like hop on Instagram and tell everybody, hey, you need to go get this because it works. Right. So we I want to share what has worked for me. So this is why I started Soul Speak Press, because I've been in the publishing and the speaking industry for over a decade. I want to teach other women how to do this, who feel compelled to share their stories and who want to speak. So. I, I think that, I mean, those are the people, those are the like-minded women that I want to be working with, that I want to be representing here at Soul Speak Press. Those are the stories that I want to tell. The women who come into their storytelling to publish their, their books with the intention of making somebody else's life better, teaching them how how they were able to put rebuild their lives, how they were able to survive survival, how they were able to start from scratch, how they were able to pull themselves out of domestic violence shelter, how they were able to get themselves out of a toxic relationship, how they were able to pull themselves out of depression. I want to know, what did you do? Did you walk for 20 minutes a day? Did you go hug a tree for 15 minutes a day? Did you block that toxic person on your phone? What worked for you so that I can apply it to my life and I can be better so that I can get myself out of just survival to thriving? That is what we want to offer our readers. We want them to have the ability and the opportunity to transform through our storytelling so that we can move out of survival to thriving. That makes sense? Yes, I hope so. All right, so... Here's what a memoir manifesto is in summary. It's an account of what happened, right? Okay. But it also chronicles your reflections on how you felt about what happened then and how you feel about it now. Okay. Both of those are memoir components, but then these, the memoir manifesto takes things one step further by showing us the transformation. And this is the key. All right, you've got to show us the transformation and how you got there so that we can apply it to our own lives. The memoir manifesto shares with the reader how you survived, but then moves us to a place of thriving so that we can all be better, happy, joyful, empowered women changing the world. Um, the memoir manifesto offers the reader ideas on how they can surrender to transformation. You know, I was at an event last night it was a book reading um with one of my co-authors for deserts to mountaintops to choosing or healing through radical self-acceptance um and it was at a local art gallery and it was just really fun it was nice to be <clears throat> back with my people and meet some new friends um and a woman came up to me excuse me i'm gonna have to get a drink i'm talking i haven't talked this much in so long it's making me cough that's when you know you've had a break you've had a good vacation um, she came up to me and she said she had been following me for a really long time and um, through all my various projects. And I, I think I was, I was tired and I think I was a little bit self-deprecating. Um, and instead of receiving, I was, I was, I don't know, like, yeah, a little bit self-deprecating. And she looked at me and she said, not everyone accepts the invitation to evolve, but you have. And I was like floored. That was one of those things where I was like, ooh, I know I'm going to take that with me. I'm going to take that home and I'm going to get up in the morning and I'm going to sit there with my journal and I'm going to contemplate that. And I I think it's just like such, such a reminder, such a good reminder, but such a beautiful observation. Also that we can apply to our writing and to our offering. We want to invite our readers into an opportunity for evolution for their own personal evolution and we do that by opening up and sharing what we've been through but that to me is the point of sharing our stories in the first place it's not about you know our ego it's not about um i mean i think sometimes at first it's about reclaiming our voice right and speaking what's true speaking our truth moving to the truth but 
it's also about evolving ourselves and then showing other people inviting them into that process, um, into that extraordinary experience of personal evolution. And how are they going to do that if we don't share with them the steps that have worked for us now that may not transmit and transmute to everyone, um, you know, very like completely cohesively, but it'll start them thinking It'll give them a place to start, uh, to a baseline to start from, um, and it could hugely help. Memoir manifestos lay out a path from survival to thriving for the reader. Um, and I want to make the distinction that memoir manifesto is not self-help, okay, because we aren't making lists. We're not bullet pointing like our, you know, five things that we do in our sacred start in the morning that helped us move from surviving to thriving. But what we're doing is we're turning those bullet points into really beautiful pieces of the narrative. So, I mean, that's your job is cut out for you when you decide to move in this direction. But um, it also, I think encasing those teaching points in a really beautiful piece of narrative um, sticks with our readers much more than just bullet point lists, right? So we want to, I think also to be able to get to a place where you're writing a memoir manifesto that is of service, you have to have really sat with your experience and moved and evolved through the healing process. And as you move through that healing process and you, you, you keep, um, you like peeling like an onion back those layers of trauma that you've experienced, um, pain, whatever it is, you are able then to see as you sit with it, how you were able to survive it, how you were able to move through it, what, worked for you, what helped. And then when you can look back and see how far you come, that from there is the intention in the place that we want to write our memoir manifesto and put those out into the world. Right. So I feel like maybe a little bit of that was repetitive, but hopefully you've learned something, you know, now a little bit about what we're looking for here at Soul Speak Press. Um, and if you have a memoir, you have a body of work and you're not sure it meets our criteria, um, go ahead and email Lauren at hello at Soul Speak Press and um, get on my calendar and we can chat it through. We are certainly are here to help you um, move in your mem uh, manuscript into that space if that's what you want and you want to work with us. Um, some other upcoming projects before I sign off here, um, we are currently taking submissions for Deserts to Mountaintops Volume 4 already. That project and cohort starts in May of 2025 and will run through until January 2026. The title and theme of uh, DTM4 is Out of the Ashes. So we are looking for stories of resilience. We are looking for those like mini memoir manifestos, right? Where you can tell us how you've gone from survival to thriving. We very loosely interpret those um, those, those themes. So, you know, that's the beauty of memoir writing too is let's see what you can come up with. Let's see what kind of threads you can pull through and um, your story and, and, and to hit the target of that theme. Um, so we're already uh, signing contracts with authors. It'll fill up pretty fast. So if this is something that you've thought about, you've seen us doing stuff, um, on Instagram or you get my newsletter or weekly emails, then I would really encourage you to reach out. We have a submission form that you can fill out. And if, um, we feel, like we'd like to move forward with a call, then Lauren will definitely hop on and schedule something with me. Um, we also have another anthology that we are working on. I am not contributing to this. We are just project managing it and curating it um, for the iRise Foundation. And then that will start, um, submission process starts in October. And that is um, iRise Foundation uh, supports women especially younger women who've been through breast cancer and, and survived. 
So um, the head uh, lead author is Jillian Lechota, and she is just an outstanding person. She's contributing to DTM3, the Pilgrimage of Motherhood, and decided um, that she had more writing in her, and so she's leading this project. And so they're currently taking submissions for women who um, are breast cancer thrivers. So if that is something that could apply to you and you'd be interested in, please reach out again. Hello at Soul Speak Press and we'll point you in the right direction and connect you with Jillian. Um, we have some other things that we're cooking up. I'm super excited. Um, some retreats coming your way, quite possibly retreats where we will spend five days working together in an exotic location. And then we will uh, publish what we've written uh, at the end of that week. So if that is something that's interesting to you, put that on your radar and think in next September. So we got plenty of time to plan and save. Um, and so if you also have an idea of an anthology that you would like to um, lead, please reach out. Uh, we are very open to any ideas. Um, I'll do a separate uh, episode on what it looks like to lead your own anthology and how that works. But essentially, if you lead your own anthology, we pay you to do that. So um, if you've got some time and you've got an idea, uh, again, reach out to us. Hello at Soul Speak Press. DMS Soul Speak Press on Instagram, or you can always reach out to me and at info at Jess Buchanan and then at Jessica C. Buchanan on Instagram. All right. In the meantime, I hope you keep writing and, and reach out if you need some support. We are here to help you tell your story um, in the best way you possibly can. In Her Words is hosted by me, Jessica Buchanan, and is produced by Soul Speak Press, a non-traditional publishing house for women who are ready to tell their story. If you would like to know more about our submission process, I encourage you to check us out at www.soulspeakpress.com or follow us over on Instagram at Soul Speak Press. We appreciate all your questions, and if you would like to leave us a review, we would be so grateful.